Hello and welcome to the IONOS Cloud DCD demo. I am Russell Barley and I'm a Cloud Solution Architect at IONOS Cloud. And I will take the next five to 10 minutes to show you around our cloud product. Now, if I click login, I'm going to see the home page of the data center designer. In the top left hand corner, I get to see any data centers I have previously provisioned and some information about those. I have a couple of tiles on the right hand side. Top right, giving me some information about new products that have recently been released. I have a, a link here in this pane to various different areas of documentation. I have a resource allocation here, which is a soft resource limit for my account. Bottom left hand corner here, I have links to email and telephone for our free 24 seven technical support. And on the bottom right hand side, an INOS cloud status pane, which shows me any scheduled maintenance or any outages. Now, if I scroll back to the top and I'll walk through the process of creating a new data center and a virtual machine. So if I click create new, I will give the data center a name, live demo. I can type in a description should I want to, and I get to select the data center from a list of available data centers here. So I'm going to select London for the purpose of this demo and hit create data center. So this is the workbench of the data center designer. We have an internet connection here and lots of tiles on the palette on the left hand side. Worth noting at this stage, anything you do in the data center designer, you could also do via infrastructure as code with tools like Terraform or Ansible, via our APIs or via SDKs, something like Python or Golang or various others. Back to the DCD, the top three tiles here are different types of virtual machines, ranging from the most performant and the most expensive through to the cheapest and the least performant at the bottom. If you want to find more about our cubes or our vCPU servers, uh, the website has lots of information or you could speak to an account manager at IONOS. I'm going to focus on the dedicated core server today because it's our most used products and gives the best price per performance ratio. So I've dragged and dropped this down. Once I've done that, I get some options to configure it on the right hand side. I'll give it a name, Demo VM. We have availability zones here, and these are different parts of the data center separated by power, cooling, networking, racks, etc. So you can utilize these zones to help mitigate risk of failure of your VMs if there was a problem in the data center. But for the purpose of this demo, I'll select auto. I can configure the exact amount of CPU resources I want for this machine. And do note that this is two dedicated CPUs. These are pinned to your virtual machine and they are dedicated cores. So two cores provides four hyper threads or four vCPUs or logical processors, however you want to term it. I get to select the exact amount of RAM I want for this machine. Once you're happy with the spec you've decided on here, you can then drag and drop a disk in. We have high performance hard disks over here and also some SSDs. So I'm going to drag an SSD in because we have a few more options that I want to show you. Again, I get to name this, which helps in your itemized bill. So demo SSD. We also have the concept of availability zones for the storage too. And just like with the CPU and RAM, you get to choose the exact amount of resources you want. So if I wanted a 200 gig drive, I then get to select standard, which gets to show me the IOPS and the bandwidth for the standard or premium IOPS and bandwidth you'll notice is higher. These IOPS and bandwidth figures also scale with size. So if I wanted a 600 gig drive, you'll see that I get higher IOPS and higher bandwidths. 45,000 for a 600 gig premium drive with 600 megabytes of bandwidth. I can also 
install an image on this drive. I can upload my own should I want to, or I can use a snapshot that I've previously created or select one of the RNOS images with various flavors of Linux or Windows. I'm going to select Ubuntu for this because it gives us some options. I get to type in a password, which would become the root password should you want to. I can inject some previously uploaded SSH keys or create an ad hoc one. And I can type or copy in some cloud init scripts for first boot configuration. And I can also automatically install a backup agent for a previously created backup unit should I want to. And you can do this at any stage as well. Once I'm happy with that, the resources in the disk, I'm going to want to create a network. And if this machine was to be internet facing, these little network cards here, I drag and drop this over to the internet. And that creates me a public facing network. I can click on the networking tab of this server now. And I could name this NIC if I wanted to. I can also enable a firewall. So I can enable an ingress firewall, which would block all incoming traffic. And then I can come and create firewall rules to enable the inbound traffic that I wanted to allow. But I'll leave it blocking all traffic for now. Once I'm happy with this setup, I can click provision changes, which would build that VM under the configuration I want. But before I do that, I'll just show you a few other things. So if I dragged another server down and wanted to create a local area network, I can drag that over to the other interface of the other server, which would be a LAN or a private network because it isn't connected to the internet. And I can do the same for another server, create multiple networks however I want to and you get to see how all of this is in, interconnected. I'll just go back a bit to get back to our original demo VM. I'll also show you on the left-hand palette, we have a few more options. Uh, we have a net gateway option, which is a tool you can drag over. We have a layer four network load balancer and a layer seven load balancer, as well as a few other useful tools. At the top here, we have Some storage management features. So S3 web console and S3 key management for our S3 service. A backup console where you can configure your backups, your retention periods, your compression, what you want to back up and when for any machine you have a backup agent on. The container menu to give you access to any managed Kubernetes or container registries that you're using. There's a database section where you can view or create any managed database from Postgres or MongoDB. And there is a management section, which is really your admin portal, where you create users and groups and assign permissions manage your images and snapshots, your load balancing target groups, any reserved public IP addressing, or manage your SSH keys, or have a look at the monitoring of the, any resources that you've deployed. Also, in the account window at the top right hand side, you can see your contract number. You can also click on the cost and usage section, which will itemize any deployed services and what they would cost you for the month. Once you are happy, I'll come back to the stage here where I provision these changes. It will tell me any things, either errors or any information. This one is telling me that I have an active firewall and I'm blocking all traffic, which is perfect. It's exactly what I want. If I wanted to, I can click resolve here, which takes me to the page so I can modify that but I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna click provision now. And within a few minutes, depending on operating system, this virtual machine will be created. I will see the IP address that it's got once I click on it and I'm able to interact with it via a console within the DCD or via SSH key, should I have set that up or RDP if it was Windows, et cetera, et cetera. And that's 
all I'm going to show you today. So thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed.